Hello, and thanks for tuning in to Michigan Memories. We've all heard it said that one person can make a difference, but the people that we're going to introduce you to tonight are living proof that it really can happen. These individuals, along with many others in our state, made it their mission to preserve a piece of their own local history, and in the process, began a legacy that continues. Today, their dreams have been realized in restored and preserved pieces of the past, but if you look closer, you'll see stories of struggle, sacrifice, and a driving passion to accomplish what seemed impossible, simply because they believed it was the right thing to do. Nestled in the hills of western Upper Michigan lies the small town of Crystal Falls. Steeped in the traditions of an old mining community, its residents share a pride in their past, the stories of iron miners and their families, and the remnants left behind from their era of prosperity. Structures like the ornate Crystal Theater, where at one time the strains of theater pipe organ music entertained audiences as a backdrop for vaudeville acts and silent movies. A lot of theaters had maybe a piano to play music, but the theater pipe organ was like having an entire orchestra at your disposal. Pipe organs have been around for a thousand years and gradually improved and improved from a few whistles and some kid pumping like mad or, or water power to supply wind to play. This theater then was turned into a movie house and silent movies were shown here. And there was a theater organ here at that time to accompany the silent movies. Ken Lamprick is now manager of Crystal Theater. He first got involved in the theater when his wife's father inspired a love of theater pipe organs. Walter Krajewski, who was my father-in-law, had taken a trip with his mother when he was six years old to Chicago to the Oriental Theater and he heard a pipe organ play before a movie. And he remembered that it played that old gang of mine and it just that first hearing of a pipe organ, he fell in love with pipe organs, theater pipe organs. And so that's been one of his loves all his life. As time passed, the Crystal Theater eventually closed. There was talk in the city about making a parking lot here. And so my father-in-law and my wife joined the Crystal Falls Museum Society. My father-in-law wanted a place to put a theater pipe organ. It was his dream. And so they bought this theater. Walter and I had gone to Green Bay and we had heard of a theater pipe organ that was for sale. The two men discovered that the organ for sale was one that they had heard together years ago in a pizza parlor. The Pied Piper Pizza Palace uh, went out of business and sold the organ and it was all crated and stored in three different places. And I wrote out the check for the down payment and then we came back and asked if we could buy it. <laughs> and I think we paid $10,000 for it, which is a pretty good deal considering that it's really worth maybe a quarter of a million now. And then we rented a U-Haul truck and I think there were six or seven of us who went to Green Bay to pick up this organ. My father-in-law, who knew what a pipe organ was, and me, who went along as the dutiful son-in-law, and I was the youngest of the group. All the rest were in their 70s. And uh, we got to Green Bay, and it was the hottest day of the year to bring 1,620 pipes, plus the regulators, and other wind chests and blowers and piano and the organ console, all of that. And as we pulled in front of the theater to unload, we stopped traffic on US 2. And all kinds of people from town were helping. People, kids from the Bible camp were there and just we were unloading piece after piece after piece after piece, just bringing it inside. And it literally covered the floor, all the seats in here and in the basement. We laid the pipes out eventually when we sorted them all out, tried to figure out what they were by size, what material they're made of, and getting books from the library, trying to find out about pipe organs and what is this big thing and where do we use it, you know. Uh, one man in town uh, who belonged to the American Theater Organ Society had his American Theatre Organ Society magazine stuck to my father-in-law's in the mail. And when he pulled it apart, he saw the name and there was someone else in town. So we contacted him 
and told him what we were up to, and he got all excited. And he, and he had taken an organ out of a church, piece by piece, and put it into his house. Today, the Crystal Theater pipe organ stands as a reminder of Crystal Falls' past and a fulfillment of a dream that the residents here would be able to enjoy its beautiful music. Uh, these are the organ pipes, and, and, and some of them are nothing more than just whistles. These are diapasons. These are your basic church organ pipe. And these are tuned by lengthening the pipe and shortening the pipe by sliding this little sleeve up or down. And sometimes just a touch on that brings it into tune. The fact that I've now touched it with my hand is gonna, has warmed it up and the uh, air molecules have, have spread out a little bit. So there's actually less air in there to vibrate now. So it's gonna be a little bit sharp for about 20 minutes. Start the theater to a live performance stage. We seat 550 people and we've had some pretty good shows here. The audience tells us they enjoy everything that we have here, but especially the theater organ shows. You know, the audience is just laughing and rolling in the aisles practically and just out loud belly laughs. And I'll sit in the front row and, and I'll look back that way and the people's faces are all lit up from the light on the screen. And, and they're all laughing, and I enjoy that as much as any silent movie. Watching them enjoy it.